Chimere is a distant planet. It is defined by waves of life brought from Earth and set free to evolve independently in this new context. The indigenous life of the planet, swarms of microbes called magic by the people who live there, are what harvest Earth organisms and make copies on Chimere. As the asteroid which concluded the Mesozoic never struck Chimere, dinosaurs remain the dominant terrestrial megafauna. Peccary have a long history in Chimere. Being part of the first Miocene harvest in the aftermath of the Tyrant Dynasty, they have been present in Chimere's ecology two million years longer than the hogs for which they are so often mistaken. In Chirule, where hogs have not migrated, Peccary enjoy exclusive access to this niche thanks to spreading before the forests that once connected the continents retreated. The peoples of Chirule have domesticated Peccary, where Peccary pigs are fairly common livestock. Most Peccary in the known world are of recently harvest ancestry. Eight million years ago, the North American harvests introduced new Peccary. Though they compete with a variety of wild hogs, they are still quite successful, especially the tropical housey peccary, which avoid less productive territory most hogs prefer. The common peccary genus Therosus is the most abundant genus in the known world, with a species being found in the forests and grasslands of Nakar, and another throughout Arvel. A social animal, the Arveleth common peccary form particularly large groups when food is abundant, sometimes with herds of over a hundred adults. They are larger than the Nikari kin, though still smaller than most hogs. They feed mostly on a range of fruit, seeds, roots, and grass, though leaves, ferns, and a range of insects and vertebrates are hunted. Scavenging is uncommon but consistent, suggesting that at least some meat is important for a healthy diet. Though they have formidable tusks that can deliver deadly bites to predators, they are not aggressive and their preference is running from danger. With herding, amiable temperament, and a flexible diet, it should come as no surprise that this species has been domesticated. The Nikari peccary has also been domesticated. Hogs are generally preferred as they re reproduce more frequently, earlier, and aren't as prone to infanticide. As a result, Hog pigs are now much more common, and peccary pigs are only found in more rural areas or by traditionalist farmers. In most regions, they are kept and bred only for meat. However, during the Dark Ages, the Khajuris bred them for another purpose. Guarding livestock, homes, and in warfare. For a time, it was conventional wisdom that the Narotans domesticated their lions first, and war hogs were bred to counter them. But the texts of domestication and war lions mention war hogs, so this is likely not the case. However, they serve a similar purpose. They are reasonably intelligent animals and take well to training. With self-sharpening tusks, they can deliver formidable injury to man and beast. While war bulls were bred for breaking formations, war hogs are bred for skirmish. For example, scouts would favor war hogs. In a raid of an enemy camp, a hog could quickly dispatch sentries on the ground or disorient opponents as the scouts set their primary attack. They also make good sentries themselves. With a keen sense of smell, they might recognize approaching people they know by scent if they were familiar or if it was a stranger. Though they don't bark, they have shrill vocalizations they release to notify the camp of approaching strangers. Rangers and scouts made common use of war hogs during the Dark Ages. They were so prevalent that many fighters kept winged spears as the primary weapons. Such a weapon was useful against people, but it is very important to also be able to prevent a stabbed warhog from advancing through the thrust, and the wings proved quite useful to this end. Of course, the Neurotan warcats were superior in every way save expense. They were stronger, faster, more agile, and could reliably bring down a large hog of even greater size. They were also extremely quiet, able to ambush quickly and kill efficiently. As long as Nerotan militia could supply meat, 
they fielded vastly superior creatures. Though Nero 10 lions were formidable, their undoing of warhogs was not these cats. It was dogs. At the end of the day, dogs grow faster, train easier, and need less food. They aren't as deadly in a duel or arguably as intimidating, but they are sufficiently intimidating and proficient in a fight that simply finding warhogs are not worth the effort. Dogs can mob a lion with more coordinated efficiency in ways peccary cannot. As the Republic became consolidated and efficiency became more important aspect to their military, the slight advantages of such beasts as mammoths, war bulls, and war hogs were simply not worth the extra effort to care, train, and raise them. When you're raising a few beasts, it doesn't much matter if they need some extra months to grow or a bit more fruit in their diet. However, these things become increasingly important as operations get larger. Now, the Republic Army has hounds as scout beasts, horses as mounts, and a few mammoths and camels for special forces and officers who desire them. Mercenary companies offer a haven of many pre-Republic military traditions. These private armies fight abroad and as much as they do at home, and many brand themselves on more traditionalist warfare, including their scouts training and employing warhogs as companions. To a private army with more funds and only a few hundred men, bulls and hogs are suddenly much more worth the effort and expense. A slight advantage of intimidation and combat prowess is a lot more important to a mercenary company than efficiency, and having a few snarling peccaries at the front of their vanguard or overlooking the camp can be a great way to set themselves apart in a larger army. It's also easier to prove to your client that your company did their worth if many enemy bodies are found with peccary wounds instead of dog bites. These things don't matter to a streamlined army with 100,000 troops in mind, but to a small company working contract to contract, a little investment in unconventional beasts can go a long way. Cheers to Ranger Dave for sponsoring this episode. I mentioned Warhogs in my Pigs of Chimere episode, which I recommend you check out if you want to learn more about pigs as a whole in this setting. Thanks so much to my Patreon patrons, Without your support of this project, it wouldn't be possible. Thanks again to Ranger Dave, and thank you for watching. Cheers, folks!